Shalom and greetings in the name of Yahweh, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, singular tense, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Ladies of the United States and other nations that might be tuning in, this broadcast is dedicated to us. I'm so thankful for the word of Yahweh. You know, a lot of things were done in the scriptures repetitiously. Each Shabbat day, the Torah was read and people stood. In some places in the scripture, one place it says that they stood one third part of the day listening to the reading of the Holy Scriptures. And then they praised and worshipped for another third part of the day. Isn't that lovely? Now people want drive-through service. They want drive-through everything. Drive-through prayer. Hurry up. Let's get it done. Let's get the show on the road. And a lot of people just go to assembly to ease their conscience. Uh, some people go to assembly for carnality, for foolishness. Today we're going to examine the word sober. Now I know we've been reading these Titus 2, 3, 4, and 5 verses off and on for quite a few weeks, but we're going to pick this out again. We're going to read it again, and we're going to put it in remembrance. I um, studied in school many, many years ago in a psychology class that um, it takes 12 times to hear a matter for your brain to build a library. Now whether that's a true fact or not, I do not know, but I know the scripture is full of remembrance. So let's remember Titus 2, 3, 4, and 5 again, all right? Titus 2 and 3, the aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober. This is the word that we're going to expound on, but we'll finish the verses. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Elohim be not blasphemed. Alright, let's look at this word sober. Uh, entry number one means restore one to his senses. Now this is from the Greek. This is not Hebrew yet. I really couldn't find a Hebrew word sober, but I'll tell you what I found the closest to it here in a minute. <clears throat> but this Greek meaning of sober, entry number one, like I said, restore one to his senses. Entry number two, to moderate, control, or curb. And number three entry is to hold one to his duty. Number fourth entry is to admonish, to exhort earnestly, or teach. The usage on it is to teach to be sober. So the aged women have a job, and this job is to teach the younger women. And one of the things that they are to teach the younger women is to be sober. Now let's examine this. To hold to one's duty. This is being responsible. You teach young women to be responsible. Responsible with their behavior, within the home, responsible for her daily chores, responsible to carry out her duties in every area of her life that she does not of course it goes back here 
She does not cause the word of Elohim to be blasphemed or, or evil spoken of or cause the word to be reproachfully spoken about. Now, in this day and age that we live, I don't know what's happening to some moms. I guess the art of cooking has left <laughs> out the door. I know there are many women that work. Um, if you're working and being a keeper at home, that's a good thing. If you're away from home, you probably better think about quitting your job and being a keeper at home and get you a job at home. Because it seems that the women that are not keepers at home, maybe they just don't hold to their duty as a wife and a mother and a keeper of the household as she should. Now that word keep doesn't just mean cook and clean. That word keep means to guard. As so many times I've said, we are guarding our own souls and we're guarding the souls of our children. Abba has made us a guard. But he wants us to be a sober guard. And because of the selfishness and self-centeredness that is so prevalent among the weaker vessel, it's all about me, 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 me. And poor little me. I've got this to do and that to do. But I find that if there is a real relationship with Yahweh Almighty, I'm talking about intercessory prayer first thing in the morning. And you just kind of tap into that, that, high, that high realm in the spirit where, where things come before you and people come before you and you can pray for them. Their face might come before you and you know how to pray for them because Yahweh reveals it to you. This is where we must mature. To. This is the this is the uh, high calling. This is the the mark that we press toward. And in doing this, we hold to our duty in a spiritual area to be sober unto Yahweh first. As we spoke of last week, we were um, have the topic of the who is your first love. So. This time, I want to expound on the responsibility toward your first love and your responsibility in being sober to your family, to your husband, to your children, to make yourself available in such a way that they learn the word of Yahweh from mom as a living, walking example. Not the uh, don't do as I do, but do as I say example. But the example of the picture of holiness within and without. A dedication where there is such a love affair between you and your creator, your first love, Yahweh Almighty, that nothing will hinder it. And because of this relationship, this relationship causes you to maintain holding to your duty to be sober-minded. Now, you can look it up in a regular dictionary. And it gets into somber or even solemn. In other words, you're not giddy and you're not carrying on and loud and boisterous. You are responsible in holding to your duty without foolishness and carnality. Now, there's nothing wrong with laughing. Don't, don't misunderstand me and just, just go in the crazy direction with this. I'm speaking of crazy, outlandish foolishness, drawing attention to yourself in foolishness. Y'all was not in that. 
He's he is for his women to be sober minded, holding to their duty, being responsible moms, being responsible wives, being there um in whatever area that you are needed within your home. And sometimes this is difficult. The closest line, like I was telling you earlier, the closest I could get to the word sober uh, in the first blood covenant is, let me see if I can pronounce this correctly or get pretty close, is the word mezarim. My husband had to help me find this one. Mezarim. And mezarim, the meaning of it, and this is the closest I could find to sober. The first entry is a level way, a smooth way, a smooth way in, um, in your in your day to day life, a level way in your day to day life. Entry number two is that Elohim creates order or regulation, or directions, justly and righteously, with justice. The third entry. And it says, among men, uprightness and straightness, to speak truth and to come to an agreement. Now, when you speak truth, a lot of people just really don't want to hear the truth. A lot of people want you to tickle their ears and let them make them feel good. <laughs> they like the feel-good doctrines, the, the fluffy doctrines, the, um, the doctrines that will um, tickle their flesh instead of mortify their flesh and this is where we need to be even in our sober mindedness to mortify the deeds of the flesh in our spirit in our attitudes uh, as situations arise in our lives and this can be a tough thing to do but if we have that relationship with the almighty yahweh we can tap into that place in the spirit to where when we know when we get up off of our face that Yahweh Almighty is going to have an answer for us. Now for those of you tuning in for the first time and have never heard me use the name of Yahweh, um, I'm, let me inform you that I'm using a King James Version from the verses that I have read. Uh, however, I properly put back the name of Yahweh where humans have removed it and replaced it with uppercase L-O-R-D, uppercase G-O-D, and the errors of Jehovah and Jesus. Okay, so this Mezarim, we've decided, we, we've, we've, I've shown you what it means. Now let's break down the Hebrew characters. Because the Hebrew characters kind of stay solemn and um, sober. The first letter is a mem. And the literal meaning is waters. But the symbolic meaning is chaotic waters. Strong and mighty like an ocean. The second letter is a yud. And the literal meaning is the closed hand. The symbolic meaning is to make works or deed done. Alright, so we've got this chaotic water so far. And we've got this, this symbolic meaning of the hand, a closed hand, that the deed is done. And isn't that so true with holding to your duty? The deeds that you perform within your household, either with your toward your husband, if it's, if it's your responsibilities with him, if it's your responsibilities with your children, it's a deed done. And I notice there's a couple of yuds in this word. There's also a couple of names, the chaotic water. All right, the third letter is a sheen. The literal meaning is teeth. The symbolic meaning is, a sharp, is sharpness, to consume, devour, or to destroy. Now that doesn't sound too lighthearted, does it? So the sheen is a sober-minded letter. Then we have the resh, which is literal first head, the first one, the first person or the most important. 
and then we have the yud again, the closed hand. So we can see how each of these letters tell a story of remaining within your boundary of duty in the chaotic waters and you do as unto Yahweh. We stay sober. We stay in the mind frame that Abba would have us to be. <laughs> then of course the final mem which is the chaotic waters again. Alright, now listen to this. I thought this was kind of interesting. Just as the aged men um, were told to be sober, the women were to behave likewise. Now, I want you to note something that I'm about to read to you. That the word sober for men is a little bit different than the word sober for women. Alright, and here's the examples for the man in Titus 2 and 2. It says the word sober is the Greek word nephilus. Let's see, nephilus, nephilus, yes. And it means sober, temperate, abstaining from wine, either entirely or at least from its immoderate use of things free from all wine as vessels or offerings. Alright, that's the word sober for the men. Now the word, let's see, maybe I'm getting this backwards. No, that was for the men. All right, for the women, the word sober is a different Greek word. And the, it's, uh, I'm kind of close to pronouncing it, sofronizo, sofronizo. And it means to restore one to his senses. <laughs> To restore a woman to her senses. To moderate. Control. To curb. Disciple. To hold one to his duty. To admonish. To exhort earnestly. To teach to be sober. Alright. Now for the men's again. Abstaining from wine, either entirely or at least from its immoderate use of things free from all wine as vessels and offerings. For the women, it's to restore to one's senses, to moderate, control, curb, or disciple, to hold one to their duty. Isn't that something? Huh. I had read a commentary. Now, if a commentary, if, excuse me, if a commentary does not line up with the word, we, we can ditch the commentary, okay? Anyway, the commentary reads, now this is just the commentary. I thought it was interesting, so I'm going to throw this out there. I don't usually do this because I'm, I'm a real skeptic when it comes to commentaries unless they line up with the Hebrew word meaning. Okay, it gets into, it says that the aged men be sober, not thinking that the decays of nature which they feel in old age will justify them in any inordinacy or intemperance whereby they can seek to repair them. They must keep measure in things both for health and for fitness, for counsel and example to the younger. The commentary continues to say, To the aged women, these also must be instructed and warned. Some by these aged women understand the deaconesses who were mostly employed in looking after the poor and attending the sick, but it is rather to be taken, as we render it, of all aged women professing religion that they must be in behavior as becometh holiness. Holiness. That set apartness. Both men and women must accommodate their behavior to their profession. Wow. Keep her at home. Hold to your profession. <laughs> it says those virtues before mentioned, like sobriety, gravity, temperance, soundness, and faith, charity, and patience, they're recommended to aged men not to... Um, uh, and are not proper to them only but ap uh, applicable applicable I can't even speak explain to both men and women now I'm continuing with this 
commentary now. I got one more little paragraph. It says that the aged women likewise, as well as the men, be in behavior as becometh holiness. In other words, hold to your duty, aged women, and set the example, a good example, of righteous, strict, straight, holy living before the younger women. Okay, or as it be seen, or as it beseems and is proper for holy persons, such as they profess to be and should be, keeping a pious decency and decorum in clothing and gesture, in looks and speech, and all their deportment, and from this, from an inward principle and habit of holiness influencing and ordering the outward conduct at all times holding to your duty sober-minded to watch how you conduct yourselves ladies watch how your girls conduct themselves now let's listen to the what the amplified version says i'm going to read titus 2 three through five from the amplified version and this is really good verse three it says bid the older women similarly to be reverent and devout in their deportment in their conduct or behavior as becomes those engaged in sacred service not slanderers or slaves to drink they are to give good counsel and to be teachers of what is right and noble. This is the f next entry. So, uh, so that they will wisely train the young women to be sane and sober-minded, temperate, disciplined, and to love their husbands and their children. I've said so many times before how my husband has said, isn't it a shame that Alba has to put into his word uh, to teach the younger women how to love their children and how to love their husbands. Most young girls today, they don't know how to love. They just don't know how to love. Mm -mm -mm. Alright, let's read on with this little thing, this um, commentary. Or no, excuse me, this is the amplified version. All right, I'm going to read this again. Verse 3, bid the older women similarly to be reverent and devout in their deportment or their conduct or behavior as becomes, the, as becomes those engaged in sacred service, not slanderers or slaves to drink. They are to give good counsel and to be leaders of what is right and noble so that they will wisely train the young women to be sane, <laughs> sane, and sober-minded, temperate, disciplined, and to love their husbands and their children. Wow. The aged women are to teach those younger women to be sane and sober-minded. Isn't that funny? It goes on to say not just that, but it gets into self-controlled, chaste, homemakers, good-natured, kind-hearted adapting well listen to this ladies adapting and subordinating themselves to their husbands that the word of Elohim be not exposed to reproach or blasphemed or discredited so women this you have a lot to think about when you're under the end of that um, spiritual whip Yahweh expects us to be sober-minded and he'll do it in love at first he'll give us a little nudge but we don't want to have to wait until he spanks us we want to stay alert and sensitive to his Holy Spirit to maintain our duties as wives and moms now think about this to be sober, holding to our duty in uprightness, straightness, 
speaking truth in a level way. Now this was um this was this is part of our uh, meaning of our word for sober. Let me read this again. To be sober, holding to our duty in uprightness, straightness, speaking truth in a level way, creating order, regulation according to Yahweh's word, and it's going to take work, ladies. Res- being responsible. You know, a lot of these young whippersnappers, they fall in lust and get married. And then when the honeymoon's over and you're a child or two along, We don't love each other anymore. Well, my word, you didn't feel that way before you got married. You must keep, if you're married, you're married. You have no right to divorce except for the cause of adultery. And if your husband leaves you, you really, there's nothing you can do. Your husband leaves you, he's just gone. But it takes work to stay sober takes prayer, takes fasting. Many times we must work and crush our own will, adapting ourselves to our husband's will. Now, Yahweh's will is our husband's will. If you got a husband that's full of the Holy Spirit and living right. So, Um, women must be on guard for this enemy of rebellion that wants to slip in when we do not adapt ourselves to our husband's will. This spirit of rebellion is no respect of person. And you got to get it right quick so that thing doesn't rise up in you again to torment you. So we adapt ourselves to our husband's will. This is where the woman must be on guard for the enemy of rebellion that would raise up in perhaps subtle ways now, manipulative ways against that which is a holy. Not that you or I think, not what you think what's holy, ladies, now. Not what I think what's holy, but what Yahweh deems as holy within and without. If you want to know why your God and Savior is only called Yahweh, please write to Jerry or Kathy. We mail out free audio CDs and scriptural literature on why your God and Messiah is only named Yahweh. Again, write to Jerry or Kathy. Our mailing address is 775 McDonald Road. Again, 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia. Covington, Georgia. Our zip code is 30014. Again, 30014. Or we invite you to call us at 770-784-0703. That number again is 770-784-0703. Or we invite you to check out our uh, our beautiful uh, redone website, okay? Go to Yawa, you must spell it Y A H W A H. That's Yawa, Y A H W A H, with a little hyphen. And if you don't put that hyphen there, you won't find our site for whatever reason. So it's Yawa hyphen ministries dot O R G. Again, Yawa, Y A H W A H hyphen ministries dot O R G. We have all of our um, television, my husband's televised broadcasting, teaching from the Hebrew Scriptures using your King James Version, and shows how the name of Yahweh has been removed from His Word. You may re-listen to all of our radio broadcasting on the same website. Ladies, the purpose of my broadcast is to provoke you to study. Don't believe what I'm telling you. Search it out. Search it out. Enter your prayer closet. Y'all was no respect a person. The things that he shares with me, he'll share with you. Until next week at the same time, 
Ladies, may Yahweh richly encourage you to seek him while he might still be found. Shalom.